Um, the next thing I need, okay, so I logged in. So as of here, I'm logged in. Um, and the next thing that I need is I want to get, um, I only want to look 30 days in the future. Okay, so how do I restrict my search to only 30 days in the future? Um, so I'm, again, I'm looking at my URL here. So let's see what happens if we, I don't know, today's start date, the 10th, and then let's call it February 10th. Oh, look at that. Well, there you go. It's right here. So that's how I restrict the uh, results to a specific date range. And so all I need to do is figure out the format of this and then you know, figure out what day, you know, when this program runs, figure out what day it is right now, and then just uh, you know, craft this string right here and append it to the uh, URL. And I'm not gonna, I won't subject you to the uh, gory details of that because it's not particularly interesting, but that's how it works. Um, so cool, okay. So um, next, next task, so go to the activities webpage right here and then append this string, which is this highlighted portion here. Okay, cool. And then open that URL, check the response, and then grab the HTML. And that's what this is, activities HTML. Um, now the second, um, the second portion actually, if you want to figure out classes that you can, that you yourself can teach as an instructor, you actually have to go to a different part of the web page, and um, I wanted to figure out what those. I wanted to get that data too, and so that's what this this block here does. Uh, you know, but I'm not. It, it's exactly the same thing, except at a slightly different um, URL. You're you're actually attempting to do this from the URL rather than sucking down the entire data set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah um, I think I understand the question. I mean, I, I want to do this as if I would do it the same. I want to do it the same way I would do it manually. Right. You know, I mean, that's to, to me that's the most intuitive. You know, I, I know it works because I can do it manually. So if I can do it manually, then surely I can write a computer program to do it, right? Um, so, so that's what the, so that's what this is. So I now have two big chunks of HTML, uh, the activities, and then the teaching opportunities. And all that that is, it's, it's the raw HTML of that web page, of the you know all the activities within the next 30 days. So now we're going to actually parse them. And this. Um, uses the other really important library called Beautiful Soup. And Beautiful Soup is um, a really wonderful library for parsing HTML. And it makes it really easy. Um, and uh, so we'll see how I, I set this thing up. So um, this function is called from right here. So first, I first I, just want in terms of what I'm doing. First, I'm going to be parsing um, the the uh, uh, the HTML from the activities page, then the teaching page, and the results I'm going to put into uh, this list right here, and I'm just going to return those. Okay. Um, so here we go. So the way that Beautiful Soup works, you give it a big chunk of HTML. And um, so then you tell it, OK, I want to go through each div element in the HTML. And I want, it, I want you to consider div elements that are called result item. How did I know I wanted them called result item? Well, because, again, if you go back to our um, you know, inspect element uh, tool here, Result sidebar, result, ah, there it is, right there. You see how it's highlighted? There. So the, the, the piece that I'm interested in, each row of these is um, held in a div of class result item. So that's what I'm going to be looping through. OK. So that's, that's exactly what this uh, loop does here. And so, um, so now I'm ready to actually populate my um, all, all you know all the specific information I'm interested. In. I want to know the date of the activity, activity name, comments, type, branch, leader, um, registration, and then uh, availability. 
Um, and so for each of these, I wrote a little um, kind of helper function. So let's take a simple one first, like get activity name. Um, so let's see. So what this does, okay, so it's got the row, okay, so it's grabbed this, then it needs to find something of class result title. There it is, right there. Okay, and so it finds, um, it happens to be an H3 element, it's called result title, and then it wants to extract the actual text out of that strip off uh, white space that's on either side, and then get rid of any uh, new line characters just so it, beha it behaves nicely, it formats nicely. Um, and that's it, and then just returns that, that text. And it does a similar analysis for all these other uh, bits of data that I'm interested in. Um, you know, same, I mean, essentially the same thing for comments, you know, and the, the, only, the only difference really is which class it's looking for. Um, and then the only one that was a little bit tricky was uh, the date because some events, um, let's see if I can get a good example, some, some events run over multiple days. And so you'll have, uh, doo -doo -doo. these are all single day trips. I don't see any examples jumping out at me, but so, so, some trips are multiple days, and so you have to account for that. Oh, here's one. There you go. So, you know, what, what date is this? And so that's what this does. It just does a little bit of parsing of the, uh, you know, I look at the format that they express those, you know, split it up, and then, um, you know, convert it into the format that I want. Does, uh, what happens if you have maybe it's a couple of the same classes, uh, same logs on different dates? Do they show it on different days? Uh, yeah, it, there, there are different rows in the database. Okay. Yeah. The way that it used to be, they made it a little bit harder for me. The way that it used to be, each activity had its own ID number. That's I made mean, it really easy um, because then you have a um, already established way of indexing all of these. It's unique. Uh, the new web page does not have that, so you have to be a little. You have to work a little bit harder. Um, but anyway, so that, so now I have a. Let me uh, let's see the parser. Yeah, okay. So what I have now is a list of all the events in the next 30 days, and each element of that list has the following information in it. So pretty simple. This is just all text. It's just all strings. Um, cool. Um, and so that's my scraped data. So now I want to write it into my database. Um, and this one, you'll recognize kind of a lot from, there's my database parser, database utils. Um, yeah. So this you'll recognize a lot from the other web scraping utility because it's pretty much the same. Um, it uses the same you know, PostgreSQL uh, library and then um, same deal. It just goes through the entire list that I just sent it, and um, it checks to see if that if 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 this one particular trip already exists in my database. If it does, I um, update it, and if not, I enter in a new. I create a new entry for it, and that's what it is. And then this is just entered into the database. Ah, but, and so the, that's the same as before. And the interesting thing here, though, is when each time it, it enters in a new entry into the database, um, it checks whether it should email me. And so this is, um, let's see, this is, really, this is probably the most fun part of it. Um, let's see, this is the, no, here's emailer. There we go. So, this uses a library that comes with Python called SMTP lib. And uh, this makes uh, automatically sending email really, really easy. And you guys probably know um, the, <laughs> the biggest use case for automatically sending email is spam. 
And, so, and this is, you know, I mean, in theory, you could create, you know, um, spam bots using this precise uh, thing. Um, but uh, in our case, you know, I just want to send myself an email from my own account um, with the relevant information if, uh, you know, if it satisfies some criteria. So it, it has the event, it has the data from the particular trip that I'm interested in. Okay. Let's see who the leader is. Okay. Then if the leader uh, in this event equals um, my own list, this is my own kind of list of leaders that I want to know about if they're listing a new trip, then it sends an alert. Is that just a hard-coded list in another library? It's hard-coded, yeah. It's just a text file. It just has, it has you know, there's um, one... Uh, attribute is just a list of names, and the other attribute is a list of uh, uh, trips. Like specifically, if the trip, you know, I, I want to do a climb constants, you know, here in the Olympics. If the, uh, the the trip has constants in its title, I want to know about it. And so then it sends it sends an alert. And so this is the actual. So this, all this is doing in here is deciding whether it's going to uh, send an email. Then if it decides yes, send an email. This is how it works. So. So um, these, this is just you know my own email address, um, and then for this I use Gmail, um, and you can set up you know any old Gmail account this will work for. Um, and no. There are ways to send it through Gmail to a Gmail account without providing a username and password as well. Yeah, and um, I did not know how to do that at the time I did this. So I just put in same thing. I just you know created like a throwaway you know username, throwaway password, and um, um, just use that. Uh, but yeah, I mean there there are probably more elegant ways of doing it. I think initially actually I tried doing it anonym anonymously and I ran into trouble. Yeah, because I didn't. It's a weird uh, SFTP server. Yeah. Very specific limitations to it. For you know, preventing people, you, I mean, they want to allow stuff like this, but prevent spam. So, yeah. you know, and, and and I think if I remember correctly, like you run up into limits of how many emails you can automatically send, and you know. yeah, so it's actually pretty generous, you know, I guess. But uh, um, um, yeah. This took a little bit of doing, you know, not much. I mean, this probably all took of all of maybe 15 minutes to, to put together and figure it out. So it's, it's not that hard. Um, and so this says, okay, the server at, you know, is here, this thing at port 587. Um, start, you know, uh, uh, TLS login using the, the Gmail, the uh, user and password I provided above. And here's my header, you know, the two. Um, you know, who is it from, subject line, and then just, you know, all the data. And this comes out at the other end looking like this. And so there you go. Yeah. And, uh, and that goes into my message. And then this line executes the, uh, you know, actually send, sends the uh, email. And then I close the connection. Uh, and that's the emailer. Um, but kind of, you know, the, the beauty of this when you when you look at it, because it's Python. I mean, this is it. You know, it's how many? It's less than 100. It's like it's 50 lines of code. <laughs> you know, to do that, which is really cool. That's one of the things I like so much about Python is because Python, if you just want to get stuff done, um, Python's just a really neat way of doing it. It seems to be, at least for me, a very productive um, language to, to use. And for stuff like uh, web scraping and web scripting, it's just wonderful. Um, and so that's it. That's the the end of my, uh, you know, um, the end of the the end of the two demos. Um, so I guess we'll open it up for questions or discussion. You know, I like if if anybody has projects that they would like to implement, you know, web scraping uh, projects. Um, I'd be interested to hear about them, and have, happy, of course, to share code and you know get them up and running as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. I like it. Are you planning to add the URL to the event, or did you think about that? So the URL? I, yeah, I thought about that, yeah. That, it would take, you know, I just haven't sat down and spent the 10 minutes to do it, but yeah. I mean, just looking at them, like, I would really want to go. I'd really, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, I still have to do, yeah, I, I still saw, like, like this morning, somebody, you know, a leader that I like, you know, just listed a trip, so I just went back to the web page and I logged in. I'm like, I shouldn't have to do this. <laughs> I know, I should, I'm like, I shouldn't have to do this. <laughs> Damn it, I want those 10 seconds back. Um,